Being blamed for all the world's mishaps is one of the biggest downsides of having 500 million to 1 trillion dollars. Uh, scratch that. That's the only downside. Although I doubt anyone from the Rothschild family cares all that much what Ivan from Nish, Serbia, thinks of them. The wealthiest family in the world that generated hundreds if not thousands of conspiracy theories since as early as the 18th century has a much better way to spend their time, namely to make expensive purchases that will make them even wealthier over time. Today, we will take a look precisely at the Rothschild's most profitable investments over the years. Number 10. Planet Nine Yacht Bought by one of the newer generations of Rothschilds, namely Nat Rothschild, the Planet Nine Super Yacht is one of the few purchases of this family that flashes out their immense riches. With a price tag of $102 million, the Planet Nine is one of the most expensive yachts in the world. It can accommodate up to 16 guests at an ultra-luxurious setting, while a 26-member crew treats them like royalty, or even better, like Rothschilds. With its helicopter deck, all guests can arrive and leave as they please. Although the vessel is designed to be an explorer ship, it still has some lavish decorations and ultra-luxurious amenities on board. The most impressive feature of the Planet Nine ship, though, is that it's more expensive than most of Rothschild's apartments, houses, manors, and castles. Number 9. Gunnersbury Park Gunnersbury is not one of them, though. Although just with a few million, this breathtaking mansion is just a smidge more expensive than the colossal yacht. Gunnersbury was Rothschild's first manor in Great Britain, built by Nathan Mayer Rothschild in 1835. He bought the land for £17,000. While that may sound like a spare change to you, with adjusted inflation, this would come at roughly £2.2 .2 million, or $3 million. Once the Coy house was built and richly decorated, and the surrounding fields were landscaped into a beautiful park, its price grew immensely. Just a hundred years later, the house was sold to Ealing and Acton Councils for a price equal to $132 million in today's money. Even so, all experts agree this was more of a charity on Rothschild's part, as the estate is worth much more. A testament to that is the fact that Ealing and Acton Councils are planning a £50 million, or $66 million, renovation of the house. Number 8. Chateau Mouton Rothschild With a real estate portfolio of over $25 billion, it's really not a surprise that several of their priced properties will be on this list. Chateau Mouton Rothschild is definitely worth mentioning here, with an estimated worth between $150 to $200 million. That's, of course, just the property. The praised Chateau Mouton Rothschild wine produced is raising the value of this Bordeaux vineyard exponentially. The prices of this renowned wine go as high as $700 a bottle. The Cabernet Sauvignon Vineyard covers over 222 acres, while at the Chateau, gathered grapes ferment in rare and ultra-expensive oak vats. The ready wine receives special treatment as it's left to mature in oak casks. Thanks to Baron Philippe de Rothschild, the labels each year are genuine pieces of art, as they were commissioned to famous artists like Francis Bacon and Picasso, to name a few. Knowing this, the price tag of $700 is starting to sound like a bargain more and more. Number 7. Waddison Manor Waddison Manor, without a doubt, is the crown jewel of the Rothschild family. This magnificent piece of architectural genius was built for Baron Ferdinand de Rothschild and his family. The Baron paid the hefty price estimated around 1.5 million British pounds. With adjusted inflation, they would be equal to roughly 210 million pounds today. Now the manor is a museum, with over 460,000 visitors each year. Of course, not the last two, when everyone was locked in their homes. Although I guess it wouldn't be the end of the world being quarantined in a house like Waddesdon Manor. The mansion has a lavish decoration with countless pieces of art hanging from every wall. Baron Ferdinand's expensive collection of portraits by famous British artists is still in this magnificent palace, along with priceless carpets, tapestries, furniture, ceramics, books, and other treasures. However, outside the manor is just as impressive as the inside. In fact, the creation of this marvelous garden was worth what would be 68 million British pounds in today's money. The house was 
was used by three generations of Rothschilds, after which they decided to open this spectacular mansion to the public. Now isn't that a power move? To leave a $356 million estate so the public can marvel at your wealth. Number 6. Agora Oil and Gas While the Rothschilds' real estates are worth over $25 billion and stretch from the United States to Israel, they are just a tiny fragment of their wealth. What truly makes the wealthiest family in the world a genuine powerhouse are their investments. The family has hundreds of businesses worldwide, but one of their most significant investments in recent years was Agora Oil and Gas, bought for what is essentially spare change for Lord Rothschild. $370 million. The company is now worth well over $1.4 billion. That's right. In just under a decade, Lord Rothschild made a cool billion of profit from this business endeavor. As the name suggests, the company's business is oil and gas, as it is searching for pockets of black gold in the North Sea area. With the prices of the energy sources hitting the moon at the moment, it wouldn't be a surprise if Lord Rothschild makes another billion out of it by the end of the year. Number 5. Rothschild Art Collection The Rothschilds have a vast art collection and are the biggest contributors to museums and galleries worldwide. A rough estimation of their art pieces suggests their magnificent collection is worth around $2 billion. From astonishing pictures by some of the most renowned artists of all time to lavish furniture previously used by kings, the Rothschilds definitely know how to flash their immense fortune while radiating impeccable taste and high class. Even Hitler, who was an aspiring artist before he turned into his more popular role as a power-hungry sociopath, showed particular interest in the Rothschilds' art collection. Once his army took over France, he flew right in to pick up some of the gorgeous paintings for himself. Around 3,500 pieces of art were taken as loot by the Nazis. After the war, some of them were returned, but many still remain unfound to this day. RIT Capital Partners The Rothschilds have investments in many industries, but their primary interests lie in banking. One of the many conspiracy theories even assigns them 30% shares in all major banks worldwide. We won't find out anytime soon whether this is true or not. Still, just to enforce our suspicion, Jacob Rothschild established the Rothschild Investment Trust to operate the banking assets of the family in England. Today, this mega trust is known as the RIT Capital Partners, and despite selling their banking shares to the Royal Bank of Scotland, Back in 1985, the RIT today is worth over $7.7 .7 billion dollars. The most eye-catching asset of the trust, without a doubt, is its headquarters, the Spencer House. This palace, placed in the heart of London, is truly a prized possession of the RIT, with its golden decoration, antique furniture, and pieces of art by renowned masters hanging on every wall. The house was renovated in the late 1980s and is widely known as London's most expensive renovation of the 20th century. Indeed, a title befitting this massive and ultra expensive project. Currently, the Spencer House is priced at around £35 million, but its historical value drives this palace's price three to four times higher. Number 3. Rio Tinto Mining Corporation The Rothschild family knows how to earn money. They're one of the biggest collectors of gold in the world. However, their most precious assets are their mining corporations. Rio Tinto Mining is one of the two mining corporations that bring up to a quarter of Rothschild's vast wealth. Worth around $103 billion, Rio Tinto is the second largest metal mining corporation globally. When the Rothschild family purchased this company, it was just a small local mining operation. Yet 150 years later, Rio Tinto is the leading copper producer globally, with a yearly turnover of more than $30 billion. Number 2. La Compagnie Financière When Edmund Adolf de Rothschild established La Compagnie Financière, he aimed to to become a leading global interdealer broker. However, La Compagnie Financière went beyond his wildest dreams. This multi-billion dollar corporation is now worth nearly $121 billion. The company is managing financial operations in Switzerland, which, along with its chocolate, unwillingness to join sides, and especially photogenic cows, is also well known for its superior banking sector. Today, the company is run by Edmund's son, 
Benjamin de Rothschild, who managed to expand the business in over 30 countries. Number 1. Glencore Mining Finally, number 1 on the list is Glencore Mining Company, the Rothschild family's biggest asset, worth more than $127.5 billion. The corporation that owns several mines in Australia is just a single asset of the Rothschild family, yet it currently is wealthier than Bill Gates. And there are only three individuals who are richer than this single company in the Rothschilds portfolio. The company is one of the biggest employers in Australia, with 145,000 people working in it, so it holds quite a bit of power in the local politics. It may turn out that some of the conspiracies about the Rothschilds are actually true. As evident from everything listed here, the Rothschild family truly deserves their place on top of the world and to bear the cross of being the punching bag of conspiracy nutjobs around the world. I'm sure you will agree that's a small price to pay to have such a lavish life as the world's most prominent family. Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check our video on the top 10 richest families in the world. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.